Hello, this is a quick video to explain how to add an access door station into Milestone. In this particular example, we're going to be installing an older A8105 access door station camera. However, these instructions should also be applicable for the most part for the newer release of the 8116. The firmware may look a little different, but conceptually the process should be very similar. So first thing you're gonna to need to do is install the access optimizer. This is a software suite that they've written for Milestone specifically. It adds a lot of really great functionality into the Milestone software. And to download that, I always just Google straight up Milestone Access Optimizer. Very usually very first link brings you straight to the do uh, download link here. You can click free download, scrolls you down, and you can grab the software right from here. This will allow you to install the software. This will need to be installed on both the server side the component of um, Milestone server that's running event server. If it's an all-in-one installation, just install it on the server. If you happen to have things broken out, typically event server will live on the management server. It would need to be installed there. You also run the installer on whatever workstations that are gonna be running smart client that you wanna add that functionality to. It doesn't have to be on every single workstation, but if you do uh, wanna be able to answer it and have it behave as though the door station is an intercom, the access optimizer needs to be installed there. And they have a single installer that applies to everything. So you just download the one installer. If it detects the server side components, it installs those. If it detects management client or smart client, it'll install whatever it has available for those as well. It's just a single installer, covers all your bases. So you need to grab Access Optimizer and install that on your workstation. So this will assume that has already been done. Also, you're gonna to need to add the Access Door Station to your Milestone system, which is what I've got done here. Um, so you'll, be, you'll right click on your server, you'll do add hardware, and you'll go through and you'll find your um, access door station on the network and add that in. And when it does, you should end up with something that looks a bit like this. Now, depending on what components you have activated when you add it in, um, will determine what you see by default here because the things that were deactivated will be hidden by default. So you probably may need to come in here and expand this and say show disabled devices. And that way it'll show all the available stuff that's here available to be used with this access, access door station um, that's currently inactive or deactivated. So any one of these things that doesn't have enabled checked uh, will be hidden by default. So what you're gonna need to have turned on uh, within Milestone for this, for this door station to work properly as an intercom. Now, if you just want to use it as a camera, um, you just need that first video stream. And you probably want to have your microphone turned on because it is an intercom. You probably want to be able to hear through it. And you want to have the speaker enabled. So speaker needs to be enabled. Um, microphone needs to be enabled. And it's probably not a bad idea, especially on the newer release, to also enable the metadata channel. Uh, because that's how you're going to be able to do your forensic search when it detects a human or a vehicle stuff, that kind of thing. You're also going to need to turn on input one. So that one is the important one uh, to be able to receive the push button to activate the door station. And you also lastly need to have this last one uh, output number four enabled. So once I get rid of all the extra stuff on here, it's going to look like this. Um, so you're going to need to... Um, Go ahead and have your video, of course, video, microphone, speaker, metadata, input and output. And the output again is output number four. It seems to be what it defaults to. I, I renamed it number one so it showed up at the top of the output list and said door relay just so I can identify it myself. But typically it comes in named as whatever the camera is, just like these other ones are. Okay, so again, input number one, output number four, metadata, speaker, microphone, camera. Okay. And also on your metadata, you want to make sure that not only is it acti activated with enabled, you want to go over here on the settings tab and make sure analytic data and event data is turned on to yes. And that will be a, that will allow you to be able to get that forensic search with the newer model of the door station. This older model doesn't support that. It just does motion detection. Uh, but I turned it on anyway, just to illustrate the point of how that would be done. And milestone. So the main thing here is going to be the inputs and outputs. We also need to make sure you have um, input and output set correctly. So that's going to be over here on the events tab. So you go to your input button and you want to be able to on for the again input number one you're going to click the add and from this list you'll find input one rising and falling. Now, I already have them added, so by default, it's going to be hidden, but you'll come in and it'll look like this. So you want to be able to add, so you'll click, you click input rising, click OK, add, input falling, click OK, add, and then you'll end up with it 
looking like this screen here. So you want these to be enabled. And this is basically telling Milestone, hey, you're supposed to listen to input number one and be aware if somebody pushes in the button, rising or releases the button, falling. So with the output, same thing. Um, we need to make a little change here. I set the output to 300,000 milliseconds, three seconds. So if you manually triggered the output to like buzz open a door, it would, the relay would stay engaged for three seconds to allow somebody to open the door. You can set this to whatever value you want. I believe it defaults to 500 milliseconds. And also you need to have your microphone and everything set up. This is just the normal stuff you do to be able to hear it. In this case, I did um, AAC um, input gain of eight and uh, 32 kilobits per second, 16 kilohertz. And you can set the video channel itself to whatever you want for your various resolutions. In this case, for myself, I set it to the maximum of uh, the maximum resolution using the full imager for the first stream and then progressively for the second stream went down a notch to uh, 1200 by 1280 by 800 and then down to 854 by 840. And then this is to set up adaptive streaming. This isn't required to make the intercom function work. This is just set up in milestone to get the most efficiency. Um, so usually video stream one is going to be highest resolution. Then you'll work down into two and three to be progressively lower resolutions. And if you do want to set up adaptive streaming like this, you also go over the streams tab click add twice and tell it, okay, you're allowed to use stream two and stream three. And this is just for video functionality to get the, um, again, the most functionality. The way that would work is you'll see right here, it's defaulting to 854 by 480 for the resolution because there's no reason for it to display a higher resolution image. If I double click it, we're gonna get some feedback here. Um, it's going to 920 by 1200. And if I were to zoom in, if there was any more available resolution, it would go all the way to the maximum. So for example, if I double click it, I'm still zoomed in. You'll notice it's 1920 by 1200, but if I zoom back, it drops back into the lower resolution. It's a better fit for the way it's being displayed. Okay, and I'll show you how to add these buttons on the screen, uh, but that'll be coming here in just a minute. All right, so first thing you're gonna need to do after you get the camera added is we're going to need to add in or make some changes to the camera itself to enable the intercom to function correctly. So you go into the actual camera firmware. Got that open over here. I can just drop that in over here and just make it clean. And um, you're gonna set the uh, input gain to whatever you need um, to adjust that to where it's it's clearly auto audible. I usually crank the output all the way up so you can the person that's using the intercom can clearly hear you speaking back to them. And we want to go over and set up the under events and you're gonna go to action rules. And this is a key thing. We need to be able to tell the intercom that it's supposed to send the input signal to the VMS to make the call. Um, so you'll want it to kind of look like this. We want a button, VMS call, input signal, digital input, make call, and then from the drop down menu, you choose VMS and then have, make sure that, that that's set up in this way. So it needs to look like this. You also have the choice of um, kind of configuring your um, light, how you want it to behave. And you can, in the, when you get into the firmware, you can do like different colors of lights and, and things like that if you want to. I think you may also need to go under here under VoIP and VMS settings and check the box that says enable VMS call and do the call timeout. Um, that'll be basically, this is how long it'll let it ring over and over again, making the, uh, attempting to make the call into the VMS. That should be it for the most part. Uh, if you go to here with your VoIP overview, uh, again, it should, you should see it kind of display like this, but that configuration is gonna come in from the, what we were talking about just before. Okay, so now we need to go and set this up in Milestone um, in the Smart Client software. All right, so we've got the camera added. We have it configured in the camera that it's gonna send the event in, and we have the inputs and outputs enabled, and we've got them again set. So Milestone's listening for those inputs and outputs. So now, now um, assuming that you have the Access Optimizer software installed, also you may need to restart Smart Client um, before this, um, and so you reload the camera with these things all turned on and enabled, so it kind of gets the memo and understands that you're setting up this intercom, otherwise it might not work. So if it's working right, you should see uh, up here, a little thing up here that says Call History. And what you can do is go into Settings and scroll down here to Access Intercom Options. And this is a new option that'll be available once you've gone and um, installed the Access Optimizer. We want to be able to receive calls and we want auto close the window, basically make it look like this. Auto close the window, show call history button. 
And you also have the option if you want to um, allow an extended access to where you can have the ability to buzz the do door open longer. You can do that, um, but you shouldn't really need to. This is kind of how, how it needs to look. Lastly, go over here to intercom settings, popped up on my other screen, drag it over. Select your device from intercom settings. So you'll have a basically click on this, it'll be blank by default. Choose your intercom device. Um, so it should be showing up now as um, and registering as the as the access intercom, and you want that on the first one. Now, if you happen to have other cameras in the adjacent area that's also seeing that door station, you can choose up to two other cameras to also be associated with that door. In this case, I just have the camera itself on the door station, which will be the primary one on number one. But again, if you happen to have some ceiling mount or wall mounted cameras that have this door station in view, you could potentially set those up for these alternates. And then you also have the access button. So what this is designed to do is when you get that pop-up call on the screen, it gives you a button to click through which you could be used to open a gate arm or buzz open a door. And you generally want to select the event here. So if you had user-defined events set up in Milestone, that's what these are that I had set up for other purposes. But one of the, one, the main one you're going to want to probably do is the default open lock connected intercom. And that'll just be a default option that's in there. All right, so once that's set up, go ahead and close that. And you should be in good shape. Um, so you can go over here. I'm going to hit the button on the front of the intercom. And of course, it pops up on my other screen. That pops up on your primary monitor. And you get this. You get a little feed from the, um, from, the, from the intercom coming in. And you can choose to answer it or you can decline the call. Now, I'm going to uh, unmute my desktop audio real quick just so you can hear the sound of what it sounds like when it comes through the milestone. I'm going to hit the button. Get that pop up. You get the video feed, and you can have the option to accept yeah, the call. Accept the and I can talk through it. You have some yeah, echo, yeah, some, yeah, some yeah, feedback some here. Feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, there we go. So we have some uh, feedback there because that thing was on my desk, but you get the idea. Um, so that gives you the ability to speak through it. And again, if you wanted to do the open thing, you can hit the access button, and that would be activating that output to be able to buzz open the door, and then it resets here. Decline the call. And that's kind of it. Um, so it, I know it's kind of a multiple step thing, uh, but once you get it set up, it actually works really cleanly. Uh, you can go over here, you can do hit the call history button, and you can see all the times you had calls come in and the recordings of those events coming in. And if I unmute the desktop audio, you hit the button, you can hear it playing the audio. If you wanted to do the call of the various clips that I've done for this testing. Awesome. Um, so you're actually getting the video clips themselves, the audio conversation that came through, and it um, kind of gives you your, your whole history there. So they've actually done a really nice job of designing this thing to, uh, to work well and to be able to do the pop-up and uh, be visible. And then lastly, let's talk about these buttons that are on the screen. These are optional. Um, in the software itself, if you have the camera selected, um, I don't want to normally keep this selected because it gives some feedback in my ears. But if you were to go down here, let me find it. Audio, you have the ability to speak directly out. So if I hit this button, test one, two. So we get the weird feedback thing going on there. It's a push to talk. Now, you don't have to do that. You have a, You can um, do it easier where you don't have to go down and look for this option to find the push to talk button. You can make an on-screen button that does it, saves you, um, save, makes it easier for your operators. So what I've done here, if you go into setup mode and click the camera, of course, and we go down here to overlay buttons. And inside here, you have the first one that says talk to speaker. And so you just simply drag that up onto this onto the tile, and that gives you that push to talk button on screen right then. Um, got one set up already. You will notice I also have an open door one over here. This is to fire that relay. Uh, so if you look over here, we have some other options. Go into camera. Uh, oh, let's see. I think it was device. There we go. Outputs. And you go find your your output that we have enabled over here. That's what this one is. See. So um, Number matches, or the name matches, one door relay, one door relay, because we have this output enabled, so it's available as a choice in the output group. Um, so and you can go down here under the, again, this is under the overlay buttons, and just drag that guy up here. And so that would enable you to fire that relay or buzz open a door. And all I did to rename it was just click edit, and you can name it whatever you want. 
And then, so I'll just delete that button because I already have one configured here. And the idea here is then as an operator, you can just right there on the screen, little buttons pop up when the mouse is over it or disappear. And you have the button to, or the option to push the button and talk through it just like I did before, or to hit the button and buzz open the door and let somebody in through the gate or the doorway. So that's how you can add the on-screen buttons to give you some additional functionality and also how you can do the push to talk without having to go dig for it. And you can just have it right there in that camera tile. And if anyone else happens to call up this layout that uses uh, this camera the way you have it configured, they too would see those talk buttons. Um, but it is a layout by layout basis. So if I were to make a new layout or if I were to drag this camera into another tile, those buttons won't exist. They're purely for this tile on this layout. Um, so you would have to go drag them in again if you create a new layout with this camera. So I hope that was helpful. Um, good luck with uh, getting it set up. It's a couple of steps to it, but overall it works quite well and it's a really convenient way to set up an intercom solution that has um, no extra cost in terms of the integration. You can just download the Access Optimizer. Uh, Access Optimizer is great. It gives you some additional functionality. That was the intercom stuff we talked about. It gives you uh, other really neat things. One of my favorite deals is um, Device Assistant where you can go and you can pull the camera firmware directly into the management client without having to actually even log into the camera or open a web browser. That's another great feature. It also adds uh, capabilities that are specific to access cameras down here on the uh, button, down here on the, on the toolbar. So if you have any options that are specific to access only, uh, it'll detect what the camera is and add that functionality to it. So in this case, um, control different functions of the intercom. See, it detected that I had an inter the intercom in this camera tile and it gave me some additional options in here. And that's coming from Access Optimizer that's doing that functionality. Uh, it works for the other cameras too. Like if you have their PTZ with the dog shake thing, it will give you that option or the autofocus, you know, that kind of stuff. You can enable that if you want to. All right, so I hope that was helpful. Um, you need a good Access Optimizer, it's great. And uh, that's how you'll go about setting up your intercom in the Milestone X Protect environment.